John here in a super cool Bleppo Toque doing a late night recording, so here we go. Manny Rat wound up the mouse father, and they left the midway and started up on a slope, on which the father and the child fell many times. Almost there, chaps, he said. Then you can rest your clockwork for a bit before you resume your duties. And the slope leveled off. They walked through a rusty bed spring around the skulls of a baby carriage, and found themselves in a long narrow space where empty beer cans standing like elms at the entrance to a manor made an avenue that led to the guttered and screenless cabinet of a long-dead television set, the residence of Manny Rat. The mouse and his child, unwound, came to a stop, while their captor sat down on the edge of the hole where his television screen had been and ate his salami. As he looked up to the night, the mass clouds lifted to reveal the sky. The moon had set, the stars were sharp and clear. Low above the horizon wheeled Orion the hunter. Ah! And near the luminous sca scattering of the Milky Way in the great dog constellation blazed Sirius, the brightest star of all. Manny Rat liked Dark Knight's best. He grimaced at the stars and turned away. Standing as he was on uneven ground, the child was tilted at such an angle that he too saw the dog star beyond his father's shoulder. He had never looked up at the sky before. Indeed, he had as of yet seen little of the earth, and even that little was more frightening than he had imagined. At first, the icy glitter of the far-off star was terrifying to him. He sensed a distance so vast to reduce him to nothing. But as he looked and looked upon the steady burning, he was comforted a little. If he was nothing, he thought, so also was this rat, and all the dump. His father's hands were firm upon his, and he resolved to see what next the great world offered. What are you going to do with us? the father asked Manny Rat. Why have you brought us here? Manny Rat ignored the question and looked back over the trodden snow toward the far end of the beer can avenue. The mouse and his child heard the singing again, and in the dim starlight they saw, dark against the snow, an ugly young rat, tough driving a group of battered wind-up toys ahead of him. There were more than a dozen of them, all staggering under the weight of the bags they carried on their backs, and they had been salvaged from the dump by Manny Rat and Ralphie, his assistant and rat of all work, and whatever mobility they possessed was due to the mechanical skill of the two rats. Once I had been kicking donkeys, dancing bears, tumbling clowns, roaring lions, buying goats. All manner of specialities were represented in the group. But few of them by now had all their faculties, and most of them had lost a limb or two along the way, with fur and clothing, eyes and ears. All their trades and tricks were gone. The best that they could do was plod ahead when wound, and that was not very well. They tottered up the avenue, led by a moldy goat, both lame and blind, who with the others feebly sang, Who's that passing in the night? Foragers from any rat. Make your move and take your bite. After us, or stand and fight, Manny Rat. The song faltered into silence as the foragers came to stop at various points between beer cans, and whose springs were not completely unwound, being knocked down by Ralphie. The mouse and his child stared at the other toys, and standing members of the group stared back in silence. Where did they come from? asked Ralphie, as he shuffled up to report to his master. I found them wandering on the road, said Manny Rat where they'd evidently straggled away from your squad. Aren't these a couple of your new recruits? I don't think I've ever seen those two before, said Ralphie. But all them wind-ups look alike to me anyhow. I never know whether I got the whole squad unless I count. He leered at the mouse and his child. Wandering on the road, eh? Maybe their motor's a little too strong. Maybe I should work them over a little. Never mind them for now, said Manny Rat. I should very much like to know who it was I heard complaining a little while ago. Something about a broken spring, I believe. Him, said Ralphie, pointing to the one-eyed, three-legged donkey. He's got a lot to say. It's nothing, said the frightened donkey, as he heard Manny Rat approach his blind side. I've got plenty of work left in me. I was just feeling a little low. You know how it is. Oh. You're not well, said Manny Rat. I can see that easily. What you need is a long rest. He picked up a heavy rock, lifted it high, and brought it down upon the donkey's back, splitting him open like a walnut. Put his works in the spare parts can, said Manny Rat to Ralphie. The young rat deftly removed the donkey's motor and leg assembly and dropped it into an empty tin can that stood near the mouse and his child. Bonzo Dog Food, said the white letters on the orange label, and below the name was a picture of a little black and white spotted dog, walking on his hind legs and carrying a chef's cap and apron. The dog carried a food tray in which was another can, the Bonzo Dog Food, on the label of which was another little black and white spotted dog, exactly the same but much smaller was walking on its hind legs and carrying a tray on which there was another can of Bonzo dog food on the label. Of which another little black and white spotted dog, exactly like the same but much smaller, was walking on its hind legs and carrying on a tray on which there was another can of Bonzo dog food, and so on, 
until the dogs became too small for the eye to follow. The father started the can as the parts fell with a melancholy chink. Nope, you're <laughs> you're writing to me. The father started the can as the parts fell with a melancholy clink. The child's back was to it. What about the rest of our gallant foragers? said Many Rat. Is anyone else not feeling well tonight? No one answered. Some standing, some lying in the snow. They waited in silence, their rusty mantle and mildewed plush glinting with the frost. Manny Rat turned to the Mouse Father. I can see by the way you stare that you have not been here before, he said. Let me welcome you then to the dump and to our happy band. He came closer and barred his slanting yellow teeth. Notice my teeth, if you will, he said. Pretty, aren't they? They're the strongest, strongest, sharpest, longest teeth in the dump. He swept his paw around the dark horizon. All this will belong to Manny Rat one day, he said. I'll be the boss of the whole place. Isn't that so, or isn't it, Ralphie? He leapt suddenly at the young rat. You're the boss, boss, said Ralphie, stepping back quickly. Don't get excited. Smiling and rubbing his paws together, Manny Rat walked over to the sound squad of toys. What have we tonight, he said. Ralphie emptied the bags, heaping on the snow, bread crust, apple cores, partly eaten pork chops, two or three unfinished lollipops, a rotten egg, half a can of anchovies, two marbles, a piece of red glass, and other choice gleanings of the local garbage cans. That's it, he said, and I see another busted wind-up we could fix. It was over by that smashed-up folding table toward the road. Any teakle brittle? said Manny Rat. The last I heard it was the other day, said Ralphie. A couple of fellows pulled off a job at a grocery store. But after they got the treacle brittle, they just put it in the vault over in the Meadow Mutual Horde and Trust Company. Then don't hang around here, for heaven's sake, said Manny Rat. Get over there and get it for me. How, said Ralphie. I don't even know where the vault is. Listen carefully. Remember what I tell you, said Manny Rat. First you go to the bank and tell them you're thinking of renting a safe deposit hole. They'll show you the vault. They'll show me the vault, repeated Ralphie. Then you go, then you say, thank you, Manny Rat continued, and you go outside and dig a tunnel into the vault. The ground there is sandy, and it's easy digging, but you must be very careful not to come out where the guard is. Where the guard is, said Ralphie. I got it. Then you get the treacle brittle and bring it back here, said Manny Rat. What could be simpler? There may be more than you can carry, he said, licking his wicks. Take a wind-up with you. Hurry now, while the bank's still open. They close at dawn. And the mouse father heard and knew that here, for the moment at least, was a way forward and out of the dump. He could not look beyond that, and did not attempt to... To take us, he thought. Take us. These two look like good carriers, said Ralphie. He hung a paper bag from the joined hands of the mouse and his child and wound up the father. Let's go, he said, and started them moving across the dirty snow that gleamed pale on the starlight beer can avenue. We have seen murder committed tonight, said the father to his son, and now we are to be thieves, but we must keep moving forward. Let's knock off the chatter, said Ralphie. I've got a lot to think about. He began to mutter to himself, rehearsing the words he would say at the bank. Well, he pushed the mouse and his child ahead of him to the black, malodorous tunnel that wound down through the trash piles and out beyond the rubbish mountains to the far edge of the dump. With a narrow passage dipped and twisted and climbed, and the mouse and his child constantly falling and being set on their feet again by Ralphie, trudged on until they emerged in the open night on a steep, snow-covered, tin-can slope of the red glare of the trash fires. A pall smoke drifted over a narrow path across the slope, and here they heard someone approaching in the chanting of a deep, melancholy voice. All right, Christy, I'll leave it there for now. I apologize for tonight's rather dark episode. However, I do remember what happens at the bank, and let me... Oh, look, sorry, I'm looking at the timer. I should look at you. I do remember what happened at the bank, where they're going, and I let me tell you, it's quite the recompense. All right. I love you, Christy. Sleep well. Keep camp. Find llama. Care around. And I'll talk to you in the morning. I love you, Christy. Good night.